everybody. Welcome to Camel City Chat. I'm John McPherson, and I am here with the president of Greater Winston Salem Inc., Mark Owens. How you doing today, Mark? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. That's one of my the best intros I've heard. That excitement. So thank you. Well, you know, we we can never beat my favorite intro was with Tracy Myers when I said I'm in a I'm in a mess because I need a guest, and then he pops up and goes, "I'm here, John. I'm here." Um, <laughs> so, uh, Frank Myers Auto Mart. Um, no, I mean, you're, you're an awesome guy. I've heard so much about you. Um, uh, we have a lot of mutual friends, everyone, you know, that I talk to thinks that you are just, you know, the perfect hire for Winston. I'm going to ask that question. Uh, that's going to be question number four. Um, okay. what's it like to come into a job that someone else had held and did a, you know, a good job for, for a period of time and then have to fill those shoes and reestablish all those things. But, 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 but first. Question number one, where are you from and how long have you been in Winston, Mark? Yeah, well, thanks, John. Thanks again for having me. Um, originally from Charleston, South Carolina, I made my way to the upstate of South Carolina in Greer for 10 years. I met my amazing wife, Melody, there, and our little boy, Luke, was born. And then we moved to Winston-Salem uh, the week after Thanksgiving of 2017 with a then three-month-old. Uh, we have loved being here in Winston uh, since then. A lot's been changing, you know, Last year, obviously, for everybody, has been difficult. I uh, haven't gotten to do as much as we normally like and be out and about and involved, but a really exciting time to be in Winston-Salem and love it here. Yeah, you've had COVID. You've had a road closure um, and, you know, all kinds of different things. And it's still, there's a still a very positive uh, feeling in our town. And I really want to get into where we're going. And of course, you're going to tell, you know, break some exciting news here on who's coming or, or something, right? Uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Right. We'll I'm going to stay tuned. Out of you you got to yeah. stay tuned until the end of the, the yeah. episode. Absolutely. So question number two, and I've already told you, you can take the mayor's route on this. Um, what's your favorite place to eat in Winston? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, I've got two. So I'm going to take a little hybrid. On the, on the more casual kind of fun atmosphere, it's Mission Pizza. Love Mission Pizza and what Peyton's doing there. It's, it's, you just, uh, did you not say something about him yesterday? On yeah, like, we, just did a, we just did a video with him recently. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, one, of my right, favorite, yeah. one of my favorite places uh, for sure. Um, another one that's, that's definitely a winner is Moselle's. I, I love Moselle's. It's yeah. also a great place. Um, it was the first place that my wife and I ate on our visit and it's uh, been special for us since. So uh, two of my favorites are here downtown. There's, there's a lot we like to eat. Uh, I've definitely done some extra takeout during COVID to support our small businesses, but uh, we definitely have some great opportunities to, to dine in Winston-Salem. And I, you know, I said two, but I can't leave out sweet potatoes as well. The Sunday brunch at sweet potatoes with the grits, man, yep. that's good stuff. I just went to, um, uh, uh, mojitos just recently yeah. yeah i mean and you know just there's so many great places uh I, um young card i mean just you just start naming them uh we just did meridian we had mark on and and, and stuff so i mean it's yeah we, we're very lucky with our culinary treats around here yeah we we really um act like a big city in that in that case you can huh? you can go to a lot of different styles a lot of different restaurants and enjoy a lot of different options and and all all across the board so a lot of great options all right, so you didn't take the mayor's route. I was expecting, oh, you know, there's a lot of great restaurants. And um, so what about, uh, what do you guys like to do? Obviously, you have a three-year-old boy. Yeah. Um, and uh, so in pre-COVID, during, you know, during COVID, what, what did you, what do you like to do? Yeah, we, we, we like to be outside as much as we can. Um, I enjoy trying to play golf, uh, emphasis on the trying part. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm really a pro at pushing the my little boy Luke in the swings right now. That's his favorite thing to do. Uh, but we like to get outside, um, go walk through Old Salem, experience that is a lot of fun. Uh, go play in Bailey Park downtown and and just try to enjoy the fresh air that is Winston-Salem. You can get up to Pilot Mountain in all different directions. Uh, there's things to do. So we've enjoyed trying to be outside. I'm not much of a hiker. Uh, but just being out in the parks and, and letting our little boy run around has been a lot of fun and starting to really get to know some other families and engage, which, which uh, has been great. It's been harder, again, with COVID, but, you know, playgrounds being back open in the, in the summer and fall time was really helpful for us. So those are some of the things we like to do. So I noticed that 
you know, you're from Charleston. I mean, don't you have to go to college at Charleston? Uh, isn't uh, that like a requirement or? You know? Oh, uh, it was best to not be uh, staying in the city for me with family there. And okay. it's good to, to good to go do something different. Were you um, recruited to Presbyterian? I was funny story. I was actually going to the Citadel and uh, they, I would played soccer in college and they dropped the soccer program uh, as I was entering my senior year in high school. So um, changed courses and uh, ended up going to Presbyterian College, played soccer, which was great. Um, but the best thing that happened was I interned at a chamber of commerce while I was in school. And that opened my eyes up to what a business organization was like and how to, how to get more involved and it found a passion for me. So I made my way up the state of South Carolina and now here in North Carolina. So we keep moving north a little bit, but I, th I think this is as far as we're going. There is there is a lot of love inside the chamber once you're exposed to it. Um, I've had several friends that, you know, have gotten involved, not only from, you know, Winston-Salem, but then have gone to the state association, uh, you know, Brooke Cash and yeah. husband, Jake. Jake, you know, yeah. Is, is, when I was president of Realtors he, uh, here um, last year, he chaired a little economic development presidential advisory group for us. And, you know, he was on the state, you know, he was involved in it. And there's that, that economic development uh, piece is such a major thing. And I want to get to that. But I, I did tell you, I wanted to ask you this. So you, you come into a position where Gail Anderson, everyone knows Gail. Um, and how, how hard is it, um, you know, fortunately, she's one of those people that you know, push people out and, and, and say, hey, you know, this is who you talk to. But how hard is it to come in a position that was occupied by one person for such a longer period of time and get your roots in? Yeah, not just somebody that was here for a long time, but that somebody is recipient of the long leaf pine and did an amazing job and built right. a foundation. And, you know, I'm very thankful uh, for the hard work of Gail and the team that helped build what was the what was Winston-Salem Chamber, as well as the board members for financial footing and, and the work that has been done to get Winston-Salem to where it is. And uh, a lot of that good leadership helped us to, to manage through a tough year last year. Um, but, you know, Gail was great. She helped set up introductions and I think she was ready to, to retire and, and uh, a good talk to Rotary Clubs uh, that she's involved in and other things. Um, but, you know, she was great. She was there for advice, but also didn't feel, I never felt like she was, you know, overstepping or trying to be too involved. She gave me space to really come in and learn and blossom in, in this role and, and try to see where we're going. Um, so, you know, the, the good thing is, I, you know, looking at chambers across uh, the two state organ area, I was the former chair of the two state chamber association. Um, coming to Winston-Salem, the chamber here in Winston-Salem has such a great reputation that it has allowed us to continue to build off of that and grow into what's now Greater Winston-Salem Inc. And, you know, the other thing I will say is uh, about Gail was, she was a, a wonderful cheerleader for you. Um, and that was what was so cool. You know, when you go through that hiring process, she was big, big, big on you. And, you know, um, and, and that's a position that sometimes, you know, it doesn't always happen. So I'm glad you're here and, you Thank know, you. You, you've taken the chamber and I, what what is a chamber of commerce? Just, you know, and it's not really the chamber anymore because you've merged in with some other things and all that. So why should I be a chamber member, which by the way, I am. Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you. So I want to make sure. Yeah, I knew that. No, absolutely. No, I mean, chamber of commerce, best way to describe it for those that may not know, we're the largest business association uh, in Forsyth County. And so what we do is we try to help businesses grow and, and really prosper and go from surviving to thriving in our community. We do it in different ways. A lot of that has been networking in the past. That looks different, uh, but we bring educational opportunities, awareness, marketing, um, as well as the connections. That's what I believe in the most. And that's why I think Chambers, why I was drawn to it, is to make connections. You get to, to meet people where they are and you really find this opportunity to help, whether it's um, you know helping them find a vendor, helping them get engage a new customer, or helping them navigate a political issue that's affecting their business, uh, you get to help in a lot of different ways. And, and that's that's a passion that I think draws. And when you when you become a member, you, you feel that support of others. You feel like you're not going at it alone. And so you have that support and those connections that can help open doors for you. And we look at it as an investment. It's not just a contribution. We want you to get your money back and grow it. And so hopefully there's opportunities for that business growth along the way. And that's what we try to work on every day. Well, I think that it, it, it is an investment because you're investing in your, it, you're investing in your town. 
and you know and your community um you know uh all kidding aside, uh, you almost fronted the product perfectly as you took a sip of it, but that's Winston-Salem sunshine. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, and you know, that's on your desk because you drink it. Not, 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 I mean, I'm sure they're a chamber member too, but you know, I mean, we have so many cool things that are in our community that people don't even know about that, you know, uh, you, you can go and find, you know, organizations that are known all around the world for being known for this one little widget but we don't know that they're in Winston-Salem because, you know, it's, it's, well, I, I, that, that's special or whatever. And I think that it's, it's always interesting to me to find out, you know, what's founded here, or who's here and, and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I, think, I think one of those, just to kind of jump in as well, as you talked about, is you're, you're helping us grow the business community when you're a member and you're engaged. And it may not necessarily always be a direct return, but you're helping other companies and creating this environment. And you talked about Sunshine, one of my favorites. You also... You know, Texas Pete is down the street right here in downtown and people think it's from Texas or something. It's right here in Winston-Salem and a family company, a legacy yep. company. And it's exciting to really support those businesses and really find ways to, to help them grow and thrive and, and, and appreciate the investment and all the people they've employed over time. So right. got my Texas Pete hat over here off camera just a little bit, uh, but they're, they're great. And uh, we make sure that we feature their bottles in everything we do as well, as much as we can. Well, I, um, I will tell you, I'm a huge Texas Pete fan and so glad that he took the $800 and didn't go to Carolina and bought the Dixie Pig. Um, so <laughs> what I will say, though, is, is I'll go out and ask for Texas Pete and they'll bring me hot sauce and I'll go, no, 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 that's not what I asked for. Because right. if you're in Winston-Salem and you don't serve Texas Pete, that just, it, it hurts. I don't get it. I mean, you yeah. know, that's, this is us. Yeah, and, and, and that sense of community pride is what we're trying to continue to build on. I think there's a lot of it. That's something that really struck me moving here was the pride that is in Winston-Salem. And we want to try to continue to grow that. And, you know, we use the word together a lot. We're trying to grow that across the community. And featuring local products is a great way to do that, whether it's Texas Pete, whether it's their new salsa, Green Mountain Gringo salsa. I feel like I'm a walking commercial here. I mean, they, we're going to have to tag them on your social media after this and, and see if we can don't get forget the new sriracha but, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, don't forget all of that. And, you know, so it's, yeah, we try to, we try to do that. I'm a big fan of uh, taking products with me and leaving them behind in different places just to showcase and share with our neighbors. Um, you know, we talking about economic development, we send out care packages to companies and site selectors and, you know, we've got our Dewey's co cookies in there. We've got our Texas Pete, our sunshine, We've got Wake Forest, Winston-Salem State gear. Uh, we, we do a lot of that to try to highlight those local companies. And especially now, the more we can buy local, the better, um, as, as we're all trying to get through this tough time. So, you know, with the Chamber, one of the things that, that I feel is such a huge benefit to my investment is your annual meeting. I love that. You get to hear a CEO talk about a, a leadership aspect. Um, and uh, that's something then, you know, you also have um, several uh, leads groups and then you also will have just classes on things. It's so easy. You just go onto the website, winston you log in and um, I've, I've enjoyed my membership and, and used it. Um, is there, uh, what happened now to be no longer the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce but greater Winston-Salem, because I know that was a huge deal. And then we yeah. get into the economic development side of things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what the core about our Chamber of Commerce roots, you know, for 135 years isn't changing. It's just continuing to grow. And in many ways, it's going to back into how it may have been in the early 90s. Um, so Greater Winston-Salem Inc. came about uh, as a consolidation uh, or coming together of Winston-Salem Business Inc. and the Greater Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce. And so in that process, our two boards, this was pre-COVID, this was not from a cost cutting measure, but when we're, when we're selling our community and we're talking about what Winston-Salem is and you had two organizations that were doing similar work, but different, um, you know, this was an opportunity. Our board saw this as an opportunity as combining into one and managing that message better and being able to really put those dollars to work and get a better exponential return from that. And so in that naming process, uh, we had a consultant look at what we were named and, and our board, we had interviewed people all across the country as well as in our community. And what we saw is a chamber of commerce is different in every community and they do different things and they're unique. 
And in the economic development recruitment world, sometimes uh, it's better to have your name really plastered in there and a business piece to it like ink. So we kind of combine greater Winston-Salem chamber. We kept the greater because we're bigger than the city limits and across the county. And we kept the ink in Winston-Salem business ink because we're about business, but we are expanding outside of our traditional membership model. And so it's really resonated well with those site selectors and companies that we're looking to recruit as well. It continues to have, you know, a new but a recognizable logo with the stack WS for people to be able to be proud of it and feel like it's growing and becoming bigger, but still offering a lot of the same services that we did before. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. It's kind of a weird one. Okay. Why did you come to Winston? So, I mean, uh, I would think that that, yeah. that that would be the core of our economic development is we recruited you with a small child and your wife to come here. What is it that grasped you about our town? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I, I don't know if I've ever really told this story. So I'll, I'll kind of share something new for you. Breaking here. news. Uh, there it is. There you go. So um, interesting, you know, the real, the real thing that drew me to Winston-Salem is Lowe's Foods. And Part of that is we helped open the new, the first Lowe's Foods to go into South Carolina, which was in Greer, where we were living, um, and got to work with Tim Lowe and his team, um, you know, obviously headquartered right here in Winston-Salem, and we just kind of stayed in touch, and, and their their launch was successful, and, you know, I feel like we had a, a, we did a pretty good job in supporting them enough for Tim to kind of throw my name into the search process when that happened, and um, during that, you know, we loved Greer is a great place, but when, when Winston-Salem called, it was, you know, this is a community that has such a resounding history, um, but also has an exciting next chapter. And when, when we came to look at just the, the endless possibilities of what Winston-Salem could be going forward, struck me as an opportunity to really hit home in that kind of small town feel where you can see people in the grocery store that you know, uh, but also have this big city amenities to where you can see growth, you can see large companies, you can have Fortune 500 companies located there, and that engagement of a vibrant downtown. And, you know, everybody talked about it being a great place to raise a family, didn't know exactly what that meant until you really get here. And then you have people that are ready to support you. You've got school options, uh, you've got different amazing healthcare, two healthcare systems. Geographically, you're right in the middle of the state. You can get anywhere you want to. I just felt this passion and this excitement of seeing innovation quarters, seeing downtown develop, and knowing that everybody was hungry for more and more growth. And, uh, uh, you know, to be able to play a small part in helping write that next chapter was exciting to us. And uh, so, you know, I was excited, but you have to get the boss, uh, my wife, to sign off, and she got to come visit. And we give her some um, Krispy Kreme donuts or something cool like that. Or yeah, there was we had some donuts, and okay. uh, you know, it, it was. But really, I'd what, come for donuts. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, but what was really special was just like we walked into Camino Coffee, you know, and people were like, "Hey, are you in town visiting? How are you? How are you enjoying it?" It's the weirdest thing in the world, isn't it? People just pass you on the street hey, and want to talk, and, and yeah, you get you get a lot of the good, you know, good thoughts about a Southern town that is warm and welcoming and, but, you know, they treat you well and they polite to you, but are interested in you. And I thought, you know, that's a special place. And, and we really wanted to be there and, and the search committee was amazing. Uh, so it, it was a great process. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, it's, it's been more than we could have dreamed of and we've really enjoyed it. And we look at it now when we recruit young families and young people and, people of all ages and all to try to move to Winston-Salem. We're, we're kind of like, you know, thinking about athletics and what Coach Forbes is trying to do at Wake, right? Is you get somebody on campus, you get somebody in the community, then they kind of fall in love with it. And I think Winston-Salem has that it factor when you're here. It's harder to explain until you come here. And then once you're here, you're looking to buy your house, looking to find a, a cool apartment. You've got all the amenities and options you want. Um, and it's a lot cheaper than a lot of bigger cities. So it's a really, it's a really ideal place. It's a little hidden gem. And we like to tell that story out there, but uh, sometimes not too loud. So we can keep that, that culture and soul. It's, of it's like this one here, we were talking about, you know, yeah. if I can get you to Boone, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm over 50, 50 that you'll probably go to school there, you know, in the sense of things, just because of what it is, if we can get you to Winston, it, it's, it's amazing how, um, 
you know, we sell ourselves. And, and yeah, I mean, there were, there were little microphones in the ears and they were saying, Hey, this is the guy and his wife say hi to him and <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, the yeah. Deer. you know, or whatever it was, uh, but it kind of like uh, the Truman show or something. No, but no, seriously, it is kind of funny that, you know, you go out and, and everyone is so accommodating and um, makes you feel like you're at home. Yeah, it sure. really is. Now, now don't think we don't plant some people now when we're recruiting businesses. Yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, uh, yeah we, we still, we still do that, but no, it, you're, it's genuine. And I think that shines through. And I think that was what was really impressive. You know, we, uh, we, we had our first child during the search process and right. just to have search committee members that you barely meet, reach out and congratulate you, whether you're going to get the job or not. It just, it was like, okay, these, these folks care about you. Right. Um, and it was really, it, that shown through and it was something you, you felt like it was a community and it is more than I ever could have dreamed of a community you can come be a part of that's creating this team effort this togetherness that we can do a lot more and and, and really play above our class level with bigger cities because of the people here that i think that's the x factor all right so with talking about the x factor then we go into recruiting and and you know i mean what well, what's the other part of greater winston-salem inc the last three letters um you know which is now um, you know, Bob Leak and all them and, and, and the, the, I'm sure you're working with and, and trying to figure out what, uh, what gets us back on the list. Um, I guess what I probably ought to ask is this question, and that is with bb and you know, pulling their headquarters, um, a lot of people are just, you know, devastated by that. And I, I'm of the mentality of hopefully the same thing that happened when they moved here happens to us and we have more people working here than we did before. And I know that's a feather in the cap, but I mean, isn't it better just to be more of an incubator and have four or five of great ones rather than one big one? Or how does that affect us in recruiting and, and your thoughts on that whole uh, situation? Yeah, Sorry. great, great, great question and thoughts. Um, first, let me just say, you know, you mentioned Gail doing a great job. Bob Leak did a fantastic job as well. And to have Bob leading Whitaker Park Development Authority now has been fantastic. We partner with him um, almost every day trying to do marketing and, mm -hmm. and he's really great at the real estate side and to be able to partner there is is really helpful um, and you know it's, it's some exciting things coming through Whitaker Park here. Anything soon. you want to so, share? I, I don't think I can share quite Chris, yet. But anything I, that he's going to be say, doing over there? I would just say stay tuned. I think there's some good okay. things coming over there. Uh, okay. A lot of hard work that's going in and, and showing well but you know, you mentioned uh, just the recruitment side. Let me just first say that while recruitment is is fun and what people ask about and, and make the headlines, you know, 80 to 85% of new jobs come from existing companies. Retention. And, so, and retention and expansion. And so when we talk about this, I always want to start with, you know, getting, helping and grow the companies that are already here, that have already invested. And that's why this consolidation, this opportunity for our organizations to come together made a lot of sense because we're serving those existing companies. And now we can take that story and we can involve those companies that are already here in helping bring others to our, to our community. You know, when, when bb &T now Truist made that decision, you know, it, um, I've never had my phone ring that many times before 6 a.m. in one morning, uh, one of the longest days of my career without a doubt. Um, but you know, what's something, you know, they could have moved everything to Atlanta. You know, yeah. people think about this. They, they, it was part of a deal and they had to have a neutral spot as a merger of equals and trying to work through that. Um, and they chose Charlotte and they right. could have chose somewhere else. So we were happy that they're only, you know, 75 minutes to 90 minutes down the road. And we still have an amazing regional headquarters, regional component of Truist here in Winston-Salem. But what I will say is that this is in the DNA of Winston-Salem. We grow companies. Sometimes those companies grow and go off and do something else elsewhere, right. but we're really good at growing companies. And we have a history of that in Reynolds and Haynes Brands and Wachovia. And when bb &T came here from Wilson and now Truist and Charlotte, you know, we've been able to grow companies like that and many, many others like Garner Foods we've talked about and Lowe's Foods and others we do well at that. So that's what we're going to target when we're recruiting. And we're going to go target companies that want to grow, that want to be in a community that can wrap their arms around them and help them succeed. One day, if that's a, a merger or acquisition and that, that 
roots, uh, we try to keep those deep, but that could have other companies leave as well. Like we've seen, you know, with Wells Fargo in the past, mm -hmm. but uh, we do well at growing companies. So our sweet spot is going to go tell companies you want to grow, you want to reach that next tier. Winston Salem's the place for you to do that. Well, look at True Lion now. I mean, holy True cow. Lion. Uh, yeah. They own what now the the Macy's or whatever. Then they have the other building down the street. Um, yeah. You know that's that's one that I've been really impressed with their growth. Um, you know Garner investing in downtown. Uh, Lou Baldwin had, had has done, has worked on those little pop ups, and now you know then what you get in Mayberry's downtown and stuff like that. So I mean it's it's all part of that momentum. It's all pieces of the puzzle, right? It's from a small one person shop to, you know, True Lion, our now largest headquartered financial institution in Winston-Salem. And they continue to grow and people think about them here, uh, but they're across the Southeast too. And they, they just didn't, you know, announce an expansion like you mentioned. Uh, so really helping our companies grow. Cook Medical is another one. Cook Medical oh, yeah. announced their expansion into Whitaker Park. Uh, which is fantastic. And you continue to see companies grow, Deer Tachi, Herbalife, uh, many others. So we're, we're really thrilled about that. And, and we want to help support those companies that are here, that are growing, that have found success. Um, and we want to be able to continue to add companies that can create more jobs and more opportunity for our entire, for our entire population. That's our goal. And number one, it's create jobs. So if that's from existing uh, from one job to a hundred jobs, all of them matter. And that's what, that's what we're about. Mm -hmm. So who are we going after? Yeah, we're going, yeah, it's a good, who do we want? Let's, let's, let's get their names out here. Let's go ahead and get them on the list. So people start calling. I can't give you names. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, we, we, we are going after people. We are going into larger cities and saying, this is the right time to move to one of the best mid-sized cities in the Southeast. Right. And that's where we're going to be. Uh, and that's where we're headed. And, and we're recruiting companies like that. We do really well in the manufacturing um, space and distribution space. You can see that from, you know, the companies we've just named and others. Uh, we're centrally located in the middle of the state. And that's a big deal for people looking to move product. Right. We're seeing now in this post-COVID or COVID environment um, that, you know, people that have distribution facilities, let's say they had one 200,000 square foot facility in one city, now, a lot of them are looking at duplication of those services and creating 100,000 square feet in two different cities in case there's an outbreak in different things. So right, yeah. distributions, logistics, healthcare, our biotech area is, is crucial for us going forward. Um, and some advanced aviation, aerospace, future of flight. Those are areas that um, we track those that come to our website. What, if they're looking at target sectors, we're tracking what our inquiries are. We're using data to really be scientific about who we're going after. And um, it's, it's showcasing that there's a lot of people still interested. I think what office space looks like in the future is going to be interesting. Um, but you can come to Winston-Salem, have more office space than you do in a big city and pay less money in doing that. And that's a big value for people looking right now and, and, and looking at those opportunities for their companies. You brought up COVID and, uh, and office space and all that kind of stuff. Um... Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. Um, I, I'm involved with, uh, some legislative committee for the realtors and, uh, I don't know if Jeff Zinger, who was recently elected out in, in, in Louisville as a state, uh, house in Clemens area, um, has an idea about maybe possibly, uh, adding a, a use code to all commercial of, you know, education and, and, and even residential because, you know, we're seeing now Haynes Mall. Um, what's going to happen with that, with the, with the bankruptcy. Um, we've got that, you know, huge building, um, uh, downtown where we've, we've moved, uh, a BB and T out of and stuff like that. What, but you're still having a lot of stuff built downtown. So what, where do you see all of this space going that we have there? Because we don't want it to go to waste. We want it to be used. So how do you address that as, as greater Winston-Salem? Yeah, it's a great question. We, we have a community group of you know, city, county planning directors, et cetera, that we talk about this regularly. And I think we're at another kind of inflection point of, of space in our community, but this is happening everywhere. You know, malls are changing, retail as a whole is changing, office space is changing, it's competitive. People want shiny new spaces. Um, but I think what we're gonna see is, is innovation come out of this. Like we have 
seen in Industry Hill with old warehouses turning into music venues and turning into breweries. I think you're seeing downtown residential continue to boom with more apartments. I think we may see more condos. Uh, that's something we've been hearing about if people wanting to own in downtown area. So I think mixed use is going to be the term that we're going to all kind of lean on that buildings may not all be one one use going forward, that there may be more of community kind of centered hubs with multiple things happening in there. You know, the, the building that you mentioned that the headquarters of, of BB&T that is now vacant, they moved 80% of those employees still here or more. That's not a, that's not an accurate number. I'm guessing most of their employees though stayed here in Winston-Salem and went into buildings they own. So it is empty, but it is an opportunity to recruit a large company to try to fill that but it's also an opportunity to reimagine what that building could look like. You know, the mall's a different story. That's challenging. Um, you know, you're going to start seeing, you, you, you mentioned True Lion, you got Novant that purchased the Sears building. Yeah, the other end. Um, yeah, at the other end. So you're starting to see they, them still be kind of community centers to come to for shopping and different things, but, you know, it, they're going to change and evolve. And uh, that's one I don't know the answer to. I think the mall will be unique we still draw um, really well from neighboring communities and our radius to Haynes Mall. I do think over time, people are going to get back to wanting to walk in stores and touch and feel things. I think right. it's nice to order online, but it's nicer to walk in, try it on, check it out, um, touch and feel it, walk around with your family, go to the food court. I, I just think that that experience, people aren't going to want to sit at home forever and do that. Now they're Online retail is definitely the, the way that is going to drive, but I don't think that in-person is going to completely go away. From the office standpoint, I do think we're going to see more back to less open office spaces and maybe more smaller touchdown private spaces for people just to have some more distance. I think that'll, that'll be here to stay, but it'll be interesting to see, is it going to be a, a hybrid? You know, you work in the office three days and at home two days. You know, you're starting to see that come up with other companies. So, be and how about the dash in this? Uh, yeah, what a great idea! Um, and I know Pete Fish is doing it with Hickory, and and I mean that's not with Hickory, but with High Point and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's a great trend. Uh, I've I've done it. I've spent a day in the ballpark. Um, we did a test run before it got live, so it was kind of fun, and got to do a presentation with the field in the background and. It just felt great to walk in a new environment and see right. a new face. And um, man, you just miss the ballpark, the smell and the, the view of it. And so it's a really great idea. I think, like I said, innovation, people are thinking differently, utilizing space differently. And I think that's going to keep going. And, and um, you know, I'm not sure there's anybody more creative in marketing than minor league baseball. So minor league baseball is always on the cusp of something a little bit fun or crazy, but they, they, they're pretty innovative at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And and where these names come from, holy cow. Um, yeah, so. I saw one today, you know, I think Burlington renamed theirs today. So yeah, I saw that one. Watch. Yeah. Now, all right. So we recruit and then wh what do you put in a recruiting package? I mean, do you just kind of, what, what makes, you know, I've asked you what drew you to town, but, but what do you all sell in, in Winston-Salem? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it diff it's different. Our, our goal is to customize that to the company's needs. We recruit companies, but at the end of the day, people make decisions, right? So we've got to go through different steps. We got to, we got to make the business case that we have, you know, one of the lowest tax rates of the, of the major metros in the state. Our state continues to be one of the top for business across the country. Accessibility throughout the Southeast, depending on what that looks like. And then it really comes down to the talent and workforce that the company is able to hire. They don't want to have to move everybody here. They want to be able to draw from the existing workforce. And when we have the college and university pipeline that we do from all of our colleges and universities, the ability to have people that are across the scale and their different skills um, are, is really valuable. But at the end of the day, a person's making that decision. So we really also make sure we lean on the livability aspect. What's it like to live here? Is it whether you want to raise a family? Is it um, opportunity to engage in the dining restaurant scene as you talked about? Or do you want to be able to have a quick day trip to ski, but also be a couple hours from the beach at the same time? Uh, or the housing market, you know, being able to be a competitive housing market that's 
you know, maybe more affordable than some bigger cities, but have just amazing houses here as well. We, we kind of lead with the business case. And then we also make sure that personal case, that livability piece is in there. Um, and that that's different for everybody. It could be the arts. It could be uh, outside. It could be all kind of different things. So we really try to get to know the people and, and, and be really personable in our approach. Mm-hmm. Do you, um, you know, do you feel your background of, of with some financial planning, do you think that's helped you out a lot in your job? Yeah, you know, I, I, I did the internship, which kind of exposed me to the business association world. And I knew that as I wanted to grow, that financial side would be important. And so, you know, going through and getting my investment license and going through that process has helped in the financial management side, but it's also helped me really understand how businesses are making decisions based off of, you know, they want to go where they like to live, but it also has to make financial sense. So, you know, just being able to jump in with P&Ls and balance sheets and, and having some of that base knowledge, uh, I say enough to kind of be able to talk the game and then call our CFO and make sure it's all uh, right and get him involved as well. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that was really helpful. It's something I'm interested in and it's been great to have as part of, you know, my, my experience factor. I think it's an area that, you know, I, I wish schools starting in middle school and high school did more of uh, to know how to do a mortgage, know how to, you know, get a loan, do bank accounts and understand how businesses run. Uh, so that's a passion of mine that I hope we can get back in the school system, which we're going to do with some of our internship and career readiness work that we're going to partner with Winston-Salem for South County Schools on. So really excited about some of that work. But yeah, I do think it's a, a part of my experience. It's helped me uh, continue to grow. Mm-hmm. So I want to, I, I looked down because I did, I actually took notes, which is kind of scaring me, right? Oh, um, yeah. uh, uh, so I want to talk a little bit more about the chamber and then um, I want to jump over and talk about some of the programs that, that you're, you're involved with. Well, amazing to me is, I mean, what, what board are you not on? Okay. Well, I mean, you know, it's like every it's, time I, you're on like every board, I'm downtown no. Winston's partnership, you're on like, you know, everything. So what, how, how do I get involved in the chamber as an individual? That's, that's a great question. I think one of uh, where our whole team is involved in community activities and board seats as much as we can, uh, because we gotta, we gotta know what's going on and we, you know, get, knowing what's going on is getting involved and making a difference. And I think, as you mentioned, uh, to get the most out of your community, you can put into your community. And so finding ways to get involved is key. I think from the chamber perspective, you know, um, we have some great opportunities to get on those leads groups to, to re, we're redoing all of our committee structure currently. It's a little harder virtually at the time, but we're gonna really relaunch that back out there. Um, we, did, we did launch a program right before called Welcome to Winston. And it was for people who just moved here or people that have been here forever looking to get more engaged. And we kind of did the, the traditional expo boost of people recruiting, whether that's uh, Habitat or Goodwill or, or whatever, you know, Second Artist Food Bank or whatever you're interested in, getting to meet with nonprofits and trying to figure out ways to match and, and get, your, get involved in the community. But from our perspective, we're gonna be relaunching our committee structure. We have uh, some opportunities to sign up on winstonsalem.com for different uh, ways to do that, but that's something we're reimagining as we continue to come out of this pandemic process. But I just would encourage everybody, um, find something you're passionate about and get involved. The reward is just incredible. You know, it's, Absolutely it great. takes time, but the reward is well worth it. And you meet people along the way. And a lot of times you meet business contacts and, and that's, a, and, but you also make friends and personal, you know, relationships. So really encourage people to find a way to get involved. I think, you know, uh, it's like when I go to a lead stuff, sometimes I won't take my cards with me because I'm not going there to get leads or, or, or things like that. I'm going there to meet people. And, you know, you can usually find somebody by just looking them up or, or things like that. And, and I, you know, I always hate the person that comes up to you and goes, hi, 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 you know, and it's like, yeah. no, I just, I just want to meet people. We'll, we'll find out how to meet each other. Yeah, um, I'm, not, and, I'm not sure what the future of the handshake is going to be. Um, you know, I told you who I was going to interview. And then yes. maybe next week, I'm asking that specific question. Right. It's a good so question. I will ask you that question. What is your, um, what is your thoughts on the handshake? Is it gone? 
I go back and forth. I'm going to be honest. I think I mean, is it the fist bump, I, you think? I, th I think they're going to be like in gatherings and group settings. I think the um, the fist bump or the elbow bump will probably stay or kind of the still awkward stand six feet apart and nod or whatever you do. It's kind of yeah. an awkward thing. Um, but I'm a little bit traditional that, you know, when when you're going to do a deal or, or give somebody your word or, or hire somebody, I think the handshake's going to be, I think that's still part of that equation in some way, shape or form. So I think it may not be as prevalent in terms of, you know, just meeting somebody for the first time. But I think when you're, you know, really making a deal or doing something, the handshake will probably stay around in some way. Uh, but I'll be interested to hear what your guest next week says. I'll be tuned in to listen. And and I will tell you, um, I, I, I'm, I think you're a little younger than me. Um, I know you are actually. And um, I think that you're about the last group that will do the handshake. I think the 20 year olds, the 30 year, you know, right around 30 year olds, I think that this will affect them. I, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate in, in, in that my daughter goes to school. Okay. Right. So she actually goes into a classroom and has this whole year. And I'm scared of the kids that don't go to school that are on the computer, I'm, I'm just afraid, you know, for socialization, I'm afraid for learning, I'm afraid for all these things. And, you know, I, that that's, I don't know if we're going to have handshakes from let's say 30 down. Yeah, I think it's a great point. And, and just to kind of echo what you're saying, I'm not sure we'll know the true impact on our youth um, from our this pandemic for years. And, um, you know, just the mental health component of not being around your friends. I just can't imagine if I was a ninth or 10th grader, you know, you think about some ninth graders that went to school for maybe a couple months and now they haven't been back the next time they go back, maybe juniors, um, you know, and that's, that's a big time. Every stage in life is big, but you know, it's just, uh, it's important. And I think, yeah, at, at some point there's probably going to be an app that lets you, you know, tap phones or, hold it up and it sends your contact to each other without it. And, you know, the handshake may be replaced, but, you know, I'll tell you that when we work with our internship program, um, we're going to probably keep treating, pe teaching people how to do the handshake. Cause uh, if you do have to do that, you know, it's still an important part of your communication, your nonverbal communication. Style. Right. Yeah. No, I just, I think you're absolutely right on that. I, it's it's going to be interesting how it plays out. It will be. It will be. So, be buy local, buy local. Buy local or buy local. Yes. B U Y or B Y E. We, uh, you know, we thought about how do we make something just bold and make it really catch someone's eye. And, you know, if we don't buy local, we're going to lose our local businesses. And so we wanted to be really impactful, um, a little bold, and, and quite frankly, a little blunt in our messaging to say, it's that important. Um, and we launched it knowing that we would do it for a longer period of time. Uh, and we had a great surge, you know, the community did a great job in supporting, you know, through the holiday season. But right now is a really tough time for retail restaurants and other shops. January is always a down month anyway. Uh, but especially now it's tough. So we're still keeping that going. So we're encouraging our community to, to buy local, uh, try to uh, order out, do drive-by, use a really cool, innovative company uh, started here called Swipe By, where you can download the app and it turns your favorite restaurant into curbside pickup. A uh, pretty amazing app that's being in, created right here that's now worldwide. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to do it. But one of the things, you know, when you're at home or working from home a lot, you stay in your pocket. So we're encouraging people to to go find other ways to support. So it is a little bold, but it's something that we thought it was the right time to, to bring out and support our community. It's all in the statements. You know, uh, Realtors just did one on uh, diversity and inclusion. And like the last thing, the last statement was, hey, racism has no home in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, and, and it's a, a longer piece, obviously, but that just, you know, it, it hit. And when you say yeah. buy local or buy local, I mean, we, we've got some, we've got some great places here that we don't need to lose. And, you know, I saw the other day that I think six and vine is going to take a break for the month of February. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's an issue there, but we, we've seen some businesses close. We've seen, um, uh, you know, pauses or whatever. What, what do you think, you know, 
are we going to lose 50, 80% of restaurants across the state? I mean, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, it, it's definitely a tough number to, to understand and guess. Um, what I think is you're going to see restaurants that have, uh, you know, seasoned restaurant tours that may say, look, I'd rather retire than just pump my life savings, whatever I've been able, hopefully to earn just to stay afloat. It's better to retire um, and call it a day. And some have done that. We've had some that weren't, weren't all the way on good footing yet that we've lost. What's been really interesting to me though, is it'll be, you know, probably in July, we'll, we'll kind of go back and try to count again. Um, it's been, it's been almost net neutral. We've had some open in the same time that we've had some closed. So a restaurant space is a pretty unique setup, right? With all the venting and hood systems and things that have to go in it. So we're seeing people backfill those spaces um, that those have gone out. So our restaurants are resilient. I'm, I'm, I feel better saying that we'll probably retain 70% here in Winston-Salem. I think across the state, that'll be different. Yeah. Um, as, as you look at it, I think, you know, it's just kind of depends. Uh, those that have been able to adapt and do things differently have been really, really impressive. Um, but, you know, people like to, to support those local ones where they know the person they're ordering from. Um, but it's definitely taken a big hit. I think the one I'm really concerned about too is retail. I mean, right. just people have gotten more comfortable ordering from your phone and uh, that's, that's easier to do from a time perspective. And, but you really need, we really need to get people to go back and see shops and see, see shop owners. And hopefully as we get warm weather back, that'll be an outing and people will want to go and spend some dollars doing that. Right. Um, but, you know, we have really resilient business owners. Uh, that, that's something that came out of this last year that has just been encouraging and impressive to see our community really rallied. And I think our business owners are the most resilient there are. I know there was a lot of, a lot of noise about that, but you guys hit a home run with the uh, uh, Salem Parkway. I mean, uh, you, you had how many, how many places came into town, other municipalities came into town to, to, to observe what you all downtown Winston-Salem partnership DOT all did. Yeah, well, I, I can't take really any credit at all for that. I would say we as the organization did a lot, Gail and her team and everybody did a lot. Um, when I got here, they closed it down. So, I mean, I, I didn't drive Thanks, on, Thanks. I, I didn't, I didn't drive on Salem Parkway until it opened. Um, right. So learning my other way around was easy. Everybody else, um, you know, had to learn back roads, but that was all I knew. Um, it's been incredible. I think it was a neat, I think in a year or two, you'll look back and, it'll be a nationwide case study of, of closing down, having a community choose to close down for a period of time and knock it out instead of a seven year, you know, little bit at a time. I know the, all the major cities across the state, I know the state DOT, um, you know, have been studying and used Winston-Salem as a case study. Now you're seeing other communities consider it. And, you know, Pat Ivey and his team at, um, at the district office incredible job the city did a great job but really the citizens of winston-salem were patient and they were okay with it and it impacted people's um their flow impacted businesses but in the end i mean wow what a showpiece it's now become something that you you know were, were worried about driving on to intentionally driving a prospect or somebody through it because it looks so great um and, oh, yeah that was one of my wife's complaints is she didn't like the you know the way downtown Winston looked when you drove through it. Now, of course, she's fine with it. I mean, it's, um, we drove through the other day with my, our daughter and, you know, the, the, some of the stuff was lit up and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I think as the springtime comes, a lot of the planners and, uh, you know, landscaping that's being invested will look amazing. Um, you know, just sunset and sunrise with that reflecting off our beautiful buildings coming through Salem Parkway uh, is really gorgeous. So it's something that has become kind of a, uh, an attraction, if you will, to come see what Salem Parkway is like. Uh, but my favorite part is the long merge lanes. It's so right. much safer now, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have the short merge lanes like you have in other parts of, of the community. So I, I you, like that. You didn't experience part. one of those coming down there from the funeral home and just flooring it and just, just you're going out. It don't matter. You're going out. Yeah, you're going to find a way. It's much safer now. And I just, I love how you know, Truist Stadium um, and where the dash play just anchors and it just fits perfectly in there. 
can't wait to get back in there and have those Friday night fireworks overlooking the parkway. It's going to be amazing. All right. So have you seen what uh, McIntosh is doing right now? Have you seen his new little challenge on Facebook? Yes. The, the, Isn't that the awesome? Takeout, the takeout challenge. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. And uh, Jason Thiel and Downtown Partnership pushing that. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely doing my share of taking out. I probably gained a few extra pounds from that. I think I knocked out three the first week. I got to get back on it. But what he's basically said is he's going to take his $600 and he's going to put it into downtown restaurants and he's got a list of them. Yeah, it's incredible. And he's posting that and encouraging people to try them out. And what I would just add to that is, you know, go try play. This is the perfect time to try a new restaurant, you know, go, go seek out something that you've been seeing and interested in trying and go for it. Yeah, we, I love it. And I think Jeff, uh, as, as our council member does an amazing job. And yeah, I'm definitely a participant and I'm not as active on the social media as he is in showcasing it. But uh, we, We've got it planned for tonight. We're getting, we're gonna, we're gonna do a takeout, uh, wings and salad tonight. Just a little Super Bowl prep, just to okay. test it out. So we're gonna, we're gonna participate in tonight. So it'll be good. Eat through the pain, Mark. Eat through the pain. That's right. We'll do yeah, it. Yeah, get ready for Super Bowl. Yeah. All right. So, a um, couple questions left. Uh, sure. One is, is you know, you you're sitting at the helm of the ship in a sense. Um, and where where do you want to take Winston Salem, or where do you see us going? Yeah, well, I, I really feel like our, our community leaders are helping guide this. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be that, that steward and, and, and be a good, good steward of where we're going and build a team around us. And, and that's the most important part. I think if we go together, we can go much further. You know, I think there's the old proverb, if you want to go fast, go along. If, uh, alone. If you want to go fat, far, go together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we really think about. So we looking at 2030, what do we want to be in 2030? And we want to be the best mid-sized city in the Southeast. Uh, we know we're not Charlotte. We don't necessarily want to be Charlotte as a community. We want to be the best Winston-Salem we can be. We want to have soul. We want to have character. And what does that mean? That means job growth. That means economic equity and mobility. That means creating of career opportunities for everybody in our community and being the best place uh, to raise a family is another part of that. Whatever your family unit may look like, this is the best place to live and, and raise a family. And we believe in that. We believe that that's unique in Winston-Salem. And that's something that we're going to put out there as well. Um, and then we also want to be a more equitable community that's, that's woven into everything we do. We want to make sure there's opportunity and economic mobility. And that focuses uh, all the way down to pre-K and through our, our school system and to our job opportunities that across across the entire footprint. But for Greater Winston-Salem Inc., it starts with jobs. Um, all, we have 30 person board of directors, 100% of them said job growth is what our goal is. And if we can create jobs, that creates opportunities, that creates people to be able to advance their housing options, maybe buy their first home, uh, really provide for their families, access to education, so we believe that, you know, if you say, what are we going to be? We're going to be the best mid-sized city in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be unique in doing that. And we're going to do that by working together. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Owens, what do you want to be remembered for here? Oh man. You know, I, that, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I'm, I'm early in my career. I haven't thought about that as much as I, you know, maybe, maybe I need to, but I just want to, you know, my goal every day is to try to, to find connections with people and try to find common ground that we can make a difference. You know, I look at the history of Winston-Salem and the future as a book, and we're one chapter of that. And if we can help write that chapter in a positive way, um, that's, that's really what we're trying to do. I just, what I will say is it's impactful for me, whether it's one job or a hundred, every job creates opportunity. Um, and so that's what gets me out of bed, fired up every day is today could be that day we add a job or we help a business, uh, business owner with something and, uh, you know, make Winston-Salem a better place than we found it ultimately. Cool. I am certain that when you got here, they told you about Smitty's Notes? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So Jeff sponsors here. We, we, we mentioned him at the end as we say that. So everybody go check out smittysnotes.com and uh, what a great ambassador of our, of our community. Um, want to say that, and then also now the 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 best part, and that is thank you. Um, uh, you're thank an awesome you. guest. I think we were so lucky to have you 
on Camel City Chat, but even more importantly, in the position that you're in with Greater Winston-Salem. I know you do a great job. I, I hear about it. And I, I hope that, that you know that you do a great job because you're, you're an asset to our community. Wow. Thank you. That, that means a lot and fuels the tank. And uh, yeah, shout out to Smitty's Notes. That's where I get a lot of my restaurant news and notes and places yeah. to try. Uh, so thank you for doing that. And uh, it's a, it's an honor to be on your show and, and to be here in the community. And, um, you know, I think every, every one of us here wants Winston-Salem to be a better place. And, and that's special. And that, you know, coming from different places, I've been able to experience communities like that. And Winston-Salem is one of those. And it's, it's really thrilling to be here. And I really appreciate your time. And I look forward to connecting with your guests, you know, in Salem.com and on socials, we'd love to connect and see how we can help our community. So thanks for having me. You said the next thing I was going to say is check you out on WinstonSalem.com. So I'll say thanks for being here. I'll Thank tell you. everybody to like, subscribe, and, and, and click that alert button and all that stuff. And we'll be back next week with more Camel City Chat. Thanks to our guest, Mark Owens. <laughs>